that he is my peace. Yeah, you don't have to fight every battle. He's your peace. Ah, he's your peace. Amen. Amen. To all who are visitors on today, we welcome you here at Rehoboth Temple because Rehoboth Temple is the church in the city, but we have the city in our hearts. And if this is your first time visit visiting with us, you are a visitor, but if it's your second time, this is home for you. So we thank God for those who are visiting with us on today. Let's give yourselves a hand. Amen. Amen. Our morning announcements are as follows. As we all know, summer is here and our dress is relaxed on Sunday mornings. This will run through Sunday, September the 4th. During this time, we will maintain a level of reverence for the house of God. Ladies, we ask that you do not wear halter tops, spaghetti straps, shorts, or flip-flops. Men, we ask that you do not wear shorts, sleeveless shirts, or flip-flops. Presbyters, we ask that you wear a jacket or a button-down shirt and your tie is optional and we thank you in advance for adhering to this. Amen. On Sunday, June the 26th will be our Scholastic Achievement Sunday. Let's give a hand to all of our students, young and old. Amen. 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 We will be celebrating the accomplishments of our youth and young adults. We will also celebrate celebrate our members who have graduated from colleges or universities. Parents, if you did not receive a form, please go to the greeter station in the vestibule and you can obtain a form. All forms should be turned in today. I'm going to say that again. All forms should be turned in today. And let me say it one more time for the father. All forms should be turned in when? Today. Amen. God bless you, because I know I'm going to get y'all's forms today. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. And this goes for guardians, grandparents. Today is the day, not next Sunday, but today. Amen. Those who are wanting to utilize the RTC scholarship, you have one more week to do so. All of those forms should be submitted on next Sunday, which is June the 19th. So all those who are wanting the RTC scholarship, you have until next Sunday to submit that information. The RTC scholarship information is on our website. You can obtain it. It is all spilled out for you. And and it's right there for you. This scholarship is not just for our young people, but it is for adults who are continuing education. You can do the scholarship as well, but next week is your final week to turn in the information. And on next Sunday, it is Father's Day. Women of Rehoboth, let's give our men a hand. Amen. 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 We're going to be celebrating all fathers, all men who stepped up to the plate and was a father in somebody's life. We want to celebrate you and thank you for all that you have done. As we all know, the uh, cool JC Holy Convocation, 103rd Convocation will be taking place July the 19th through the 24th. It will be at the Sheraton Greensboro Four Seasons Hotel. Our registration is now open. Adults, it is $30 for you, which includes one child, and each additional child is $10. This will give you access to all services and all workshops. For the youth, your registration is $20 and this will gain you access to all services and all youth activities. This is for ages 4 to 17. The one thing that we do say, you must be vaccinated to go to any of the services. You must have your card and you must upload your card to go into any of the services. On July the 19th, there will be a black tie of Fair, honoring Apostle Dr. James I. Clark Jr. and his lovely wife, Mother Shirley L. Clark. This will take place on July the 19th. This is a gala, and we're celebrating the legendary leadership of Apostle Clark. You still can purchase your ticket. The last day to purchase tickets is June the 20th. For adults, your tickets are 
$100. For seniors, 75 and up, your tickets are $60. And for children 11 and under, their tickets are $70, $17. Please forgive me. Delegates must be registered to attend. If you do not have your hotel for the Holy Convocation, there is an overflow hotel. This is the Doubletree Greensboro, and their room rate is $150 a night plus taxes and fees. If you need a scooter while at the convention, you can do so. You can rent one there. All information regarding the Holy Convocation is on the Cool JC website, which is www.cooljc.org. So, amen. You have all the announcements concerning the convocation, and we hope to see your face in the place. And we ask that you please continue to watch RTC on Facebook on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. and on Sunday at 11 a.m. On Saturdays, you can dial into our Hope Line. How many are blessed by the Hope Line? Amen. I don't see many of you all clapping, so that's telling me a lot of you all don't dial in. Please dial into the Hope Line. I'm going to tell you, your life will be changed dialing into the Hope Line. You can do so by calling 712-432-3900, and the access code is 646-188-POUND. We have prayer warriors who are on the line to pray for you and with you. And I'm telling you, I thank God for Sister Hope Reed being on our prayer line every Saturday. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our own Deacon Vaughn being on the prayer line every Saturday. Amen. And I'm telling you, lives, lives are being changed. We have awesome testimonies of the goodness of God, of God's healing power, how God has turned some situations around. So if you have not dialed in, come on. It's time for you to get on board and Get on board with our prayer line where God will meet you right there. If you would like to give to RTC, you can do so by going to our website, RehobothTempleChurch.org, and give utilizing Givelify. While here in person, you can give using our Clover machine, or if you just want to mail your CD in, you can do so as well. Please send it to 1111 East Long Street, P.O. Box 83326, and our zip code is 43203. We have a beautiful card of thanks, and it states, it's just like you to reach out to others, to do, to do things, even small things, that help in a big way, to care like no one else, and to take the time to show it. You have a deep down goodness that comes through in your actions. Saying thank you just doesn't seem to cover it. You're a blessing to me, and I'm truly grateful for you. And this is coming from our own Deacon Melvin Pinnell and family, and we will continue to keep them in prayer. Amen. 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 And that is all of our announcements, but I'd just like to give you this thought. On last Sunday, we walked around this church, and it was beautiful. And we were proclaiming, that's right, you can clap, we were proclaiming victory. Yeah. Victory in our homes, victory on our jobs, wherever our feet were shall trod, we proclaim victory. But I know that the devil is always on his job, and that's one thing that he always does. And somebody may have come in here today and feeling like, you know what? I don't have that victory that I had on last week. Well, I just want to tell you this, that God is too true to be false. He's too omnipotent to be weak. He's too omnipresent to be absent. He's too wise to make a mistake, and he's too kind to be mean. So rest assure that he knows the thoughts that he has towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, and therefore trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path, and 
and being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Praise team. La, la, la. Ah, there we go. To follow that word is, uh, <laughs> Sister Patrice, thank you so much for that. Man. Ooh. They say that mountain can't be moved they say the chain will never break but they don't know you like we do there is power in your name we've heard that there is no way We've heard the tide will never change But they don't know what you can do There is power in your name Yes it is So much power in your name Move the One more time. Oh. 
with the Lord. So do need him now, right now. If you ever need him, the Lord, so do need him now, right now. If you ever need him, the Lord, so do need him now, right now. If you ever need him, the Lord, so do need him now, right now. If you ever need him, the Lord, so do need him now. Come, come on up, Pastor. <laughs> he makes everything. He makes everything. Y'all act like y'all want to have church up in here. God been good to anybody? Oh, I just, I'm so elated. Last Sunday, I didn't know where I was. Sick as a dog, but he laid his hands on me. And he made everything. I said he made everything. He made everything. All right, I wish I had a praise in the house. We honor the spirit of the Lord today and to our illustrious pastor, Apostle Barry, in his absence, who's away on assignment, and they just sang me happy this morning. Ain't there any all right? And we thank God, and we honor everyone in their respective places, and it's just good to be here. I thank God for my wife, who's still putting up with me, and I just, lo I just love her. You can go tell her I'm still in love with her, and I love all y'all. God is good, and he's good to be praised. They sang a song, but they didn't sing my song. Come on back here, Brother Alvis. Y'all help me. Uh, you see these gray hairs? That's old school. Pass me not, O oh gentle say. Just a little hymn. Yeah. Sing it with me, church. While on others thou art calling, while on others thou art calling, do thank you, sir. Let's say that one more time. Savior, blessed Savior. Let the devil hear you. Hear my. Y'all ain't gonna help me. While thou art calling, do. With your heads bowed, Lord Jesus Christ. We acknowledge your presence in this place today. Anoint this body of flesh. Anoint these lips of clay. Give us information. Give us illustration. Give us illumination and demonstration that we might deliver thy word. Give somebody an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. 
and we will leave this place saying that it was good to be here. The spirit has come and he left joy in my soul. If there's a sick person in the building, lay on your hands on them. Those that are grieved because of loved ones, this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Everybody that love God said amen, amen and amen. God bless you. I think I sung that in the key of X, Y, Z. He'll get it after a while. The word of the Lord came to me in the book of Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. So good to see all of you. And we thank God for those that are listening to us by social media, the Hope Line, Facebook, from whatever state you're in and you hear my voice, you are a blessed person. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, and the first verse, if you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, the word of the Lord came from, to Jeremiah, from the Lord, saying, arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel. Can I say that? And he made it again another vessel, and it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I do not with you as this potter? Said the Lord, Behold, the clay in the potter's hand, so ye are in my hands, O house of Israel. And the whole church said, Amen. Amen. He made it another vessel. I want to talk about a new thing. And, and that's, that's my subject, if I could leave it with you just for a little while. And I want you to look at your neighbor, and you don't have to take your mask off. Just tell them, God, God is making something beautiful out of my life. We are living in pandemic times. We are living in perilous times. We are living in troubled times. But I stopped by here to tell y'all, God is still on the throne. Sometimes we complain about what's not right, what is right, what's going on, what should be going on. But you know what I tell people? God is not blind. He's not deaf. He sees, he knows, and he cares. Every heartache, every disappointment, everything that you have to go through, he knows about it. And I want you to trust him that he's going to bring you out. We used to sing a song that says, he's never failed me yet. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ has never failed me yet. And my friend, if you read the final chapter, in the end, we win. Can I say that again? Some of y'all don't believe that. You, 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 you just so uptight. God has blessed you to be a blessing. Do I have a witness in the house? If you're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, you are blessed. And you ought to tell your neighbors to tell your neighbors to tell your neighbors. There's no God like our God. But sometimes we act like closet Christians. But I like that song that says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go. Because Jesus gave me this light. <laughs> and no world, no demon in hell can put it out. I want this to be a thought of hope. I want you to be encouraged when you leave here. To know that everything, as they say, he's going to work it out for your good. It might not be good, but it's going to be for your good. Anybody have any situations that you need God to handle? Anybody living in, in terrible times? 
If you're in this world, you're going to catch it. And don't depend on the White House to do what God can do. God looks out for his children. He sees, he knows, and he cares. But sometimes we look like we have another agenda. We want to put God on the back burner. And we don't pray like we used to pray. We don't pray like we ought to pray. And we're so tired from doing our daily chores that when we go to bed at night, we say, Lord, I'll talk to you in the morning. And then when we get up in the morning, Lord, I'm on my way. I'll talk to you when I get back home. But you need to put God in his proper perspective. Because if God can't do it, it can't be done. And God is standing here at your beckoning call waiting for you to ask him. Because God can do anything, but he can't fail you. And I want you to trust him from this day forward. I don't care what they say about you. I tell my children as long as they don't put their hands on you. Because talk is cheap. Everybody's doing it. You know who you are and you know whose you are. And they have to respect the God in you. I'm talking about people that you think that hate you. People that despitefully use you. Love them anyway. and Because God is working on the inside. And he's working on the outside. But I want you to learn how to praise him, even when things are not going your way. Because this is what happened in the land of Israel. God gave them everything, even after he brought them out of the land of Egypt, where they had milk and honey. They were not satisfied, so they took a two-year journey to get to the promised land. It ended up 40 years to get through that wilderness. We don't have that long, my friend. Because the Lord could come any day now. And, and, and you're going to have to be ready, not get ready. You're going to have to lay aside weights and sins, that stuff that you, you don't need over there. Hallelujah. We're carrying too much baggage as children of God. We should travel light. Hallelujah. Do I have a witness in here? Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Leave what she said. Leave what he said. And pick up your cross and follow him daily. I wish I had some help in here. God is trying to bring you out of that mess. God is trying to save your soul. He's trying to make you happy. And sometimes it looks like we are, are, are more miserable, broke, busted, and disgusted. But that's not the way God intended for us. He died on the cross. And if he didn't die for the cross, on the cross, our souls would be lost. And your hope should go beyond the grave. Do I have a witness in here? I've never seen so many disgruntled Christians. This ain't right. That ain't right. Blah, 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 blah. What did God do to you? Let's see if that's working. What did God do for you? He woke you up this morning. Started you on your... Oh, God, I felt that one. Hallelujah, somebody. Don't worry about what she said, he said. Don't worry about what's on Facebook, TikTok, and wit and all that other stuff. Wake up with a praise on your lip. The blood is still running warm in your veins. And you have a reasonable portion of health and strength. And some of us still got our right mind. Why can't, just, just let's take a three minute praise, three second praise break. And if God has been good to you today, I ain't talking about 40 years ago. Jump up right quick and tell him thank you. Hallelujah, somebody. If he's been good to you this day, jump up and give him a quick praise and take your seat. <laughs> Gasoline is going up every day. Stop complaining. Thank God you got a car to ride in. Lexus. You know, you got to ride in it. If you got to catch the Dakota bus, thank God for transport. I tell about Shanda. Stop your complaining. If you got food on your table, tell him thank you. People are standing on the corners begging for handouts. God has laid his hands on you. Hallelujah. Even if you have to hitchhike, thank God you got two feet to walk on. There are people that don't know who they are and they don't know where they are. But if you know where you are, you know who you are, put your hands together. I'm just looking for some praises in the house. Because the Bible said that Israel had sinned against God. Jeremiah 
was called by God as a child. He was a very young kid. And just like some of us, he had an excuse. If God has something for you to do, my friend, do it. Because this may be your last time. I don't know. I'm going to serve the Lord. Because the scripture I read somewhere, I think it was in St. John, work while it is day when the night comes. When the night comes, they lay you out here. Are you listening? Mama can't save you. Nobody else can save you. Work when you can. Do your best for Jesus. Bad, good, or indifferent. If you're going to be an usher, be the best usher. If you're going to be a trash picker up, be the best. Because God will do you like he did Job. That's my boy. The devil said, you got a hedge around him. <laughs> you keep your hedge around you. You hear what I'm saying? Because the devil is trying to take us all out of here. Bless the name of God. Israel sinned against God. Jeremiah prophesied from a little child. Read it in the first chapter when you get home. He was only a kid. And Jeremiah said to the Lord, they looking at me. And God told Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. They don't like you anyway. If God told you to do something, go ahead and do it. There's a reward for what God told you to do. And he's not going to ask this in January, brother, February, or nobody. God said, you do this, and you shall have eternal life. Do I have a witness in here? I like working for Jesus. Because serving the Lord, hallelujah, serving the Lord is going to pay off after a while. Do I have a witness in him? So Jeremiah, after making excuses, he made up his mind that he was going to go out and prophesy. He assured him that he was going to be with him. And he was not afraid. Well, Israel had some sins and some charges against them. This was during the dark days of Josiah. He was the last good king. All the way into Babylon, Judah and Israel just kept sinning. And the reason I want to point that out, because it looks like America has turned its back on God. This, 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 this country was founded on freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and liberty and justice for all. But look like we are doing everything but, as a body of believers, but praising God. But I don't know about you, but I'm going to praise him as long as I live. Because I haven't found nobody. Hallelujah. Not my mother, not my father, not my sister, not my brother can do me like Jesus. Do I have a witness in the house? Jeremiah told Israel about their backsliding. He told them about bondage. And he told them about the restoration. And I want you to know God is not going to get you in a situation and he's not going to give you no hope. Even if you are in sin, God will forgive you and he will bring you out. Did he bring anybody out in here? Now, you don't have to put your hand up, but y'all used to be some rough customers. <laughs> y'all used to do some stuff you couldn't tell your mama. But he forgave you. <laughs> and he washed you. You don't look like an alcoholic. You don't look like a sinner. You don't look like a homo. You don't look like somebody that had the devil in them. I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about the person sitting next to you. Israel continued to sin. This bothered Jeremiah. He was known as the weeping prophet. And when you see a, a real man, a real man will cry. Oh yes, there's nothing wrong with tears. But the people that he had prophesied to just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And somewhere in the 12th chapter, about the fifth verse, it says, if running with the footman worry you, how are you going to contend with the horses? If this little stuff you going through now, what you going to do when the water come up to your waist? If you can't, when the water is down here, he said in the 12th chapter, what you going to do when Jordan really swells? Hallelujah. And I'm telling you this because prices are not going to get any better. This medicine is not, everybody in here is on some kind of medication. If you ain't, maybe you need to be. <laughs> I ain't talking about you. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. 
We have to learn to call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Your job cannot save you. Your 401k cannot save you. And then I'm going to say you just might as well see enjoy what God has given you because we don't need it over there on the other side. Hallelujah. God is making us beautiful saints. God is making us a beautiful people that is called by his name. But look like every day we get a chance, we turn our back on God. And God is not happy. God don't make no junk. He made you, hallelujah, to put you on a pedestal and let the devil know he can keep you in the midst of your trying times. <laughs> hallelujah. He was known as a weeping prophet. Even after they were carried into captivity, Jeremiah prophesied on every aspect of their life but it looks like they would not turn to God God is blessing us on the left he's blessing us on the right and we too tired to open our mouth and praise him but when 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 them pains hit when when trouble comes at your door this is look like you ought to praise him while the sun is shining you ought to praise him while you have money in your pocket praise him when food is on your table and when the devil give you a hard time you ought to come out of your pocket with your best praise because god is making something beautiful hallelujah god don't make no junk i don't care how they look at you you're a child of the king your, your royal priesthood, your holy nation, and we should show forth the praises of him that called us from darkness to light. God wants to use you, my friend. Hello? He wants you to be a light in this dark world when you go to work. I didn't tell nobody I was saved on, 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 on my job, Ella Robot. But I heard some guys talking. They said, don't curse around him. He's a preacher. If you have that light, it ought to shine. When you go out in the yard, it ought to shine. When you go in the grocery store, somebody ought to look at you and say, she's one of them. She's saved. I know her life. God is doing things in your life that you don't have no conclusion and not aware of. All he wants you to do is let your light shine. Because soon and very soon, we'll be leaving here. And you ought to praise him while you have a chance. Do I have a witness in here? This country, and can I say that again? I ain't talking about Democrats or Republicans. I'm talking about everybody. This country has forgotten God. We have turned our back on God, saying, don't let it be said too late. Every chance you get a chance, come to church. Because you never know when it's going to be your last time. Folks are dying that have never died before. And these are not people across town. These are people in our families. Hallelujah. Saints, don't stop praying. Don't stop praising him. Because Israel stopped. And they started worshiping that other God. And sometimes when they had these crises, you remember those children got killed down in Texas? Nobody said, let us pray. Hallelujah. When, when, when the war broke out in, 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 in Afghanistan, nobody said, let's pray. When you got your house broke in, first thing you thought about was call the insurance company. Now, I want the Lord to get that rascal that broke in here. Turn him around and save him. Hallelujah. Won't he do it? Oh, bless his name forever. Y'all don't hear me. The Bible said, and here's where Israel's problem was. Here's what I'm not worried about those foreign countries. I'm concerned about where we live on this American soil, the home of the brave, the land of the free. Well, we don't even praise God like we, we used to go in the restaurants and sit down and say your grace. Now we're so greedy and needy, we just. <laughs> I ain't talking about you, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. You need to wake up, smell a coffee, and give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody in here ever had an operation? You don't have to raise your hand. Anybody in here ever been sick? God healed you, didn't he? Didn't he heal you? Why don't you clap your hands and give him praise? Because you could have died in the operating room. Those pills could have taken you out of the, the surgeon could have made a wrong move. But God laid his hands on you. Hallelujah. He was making something beautiful out of your life. The Bible says, back to my point, pride. Mm -hmm. 
exalt a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Israel just kept sinning and sinning and sinning. This is what made Jeremiah cry. This is why your heart is ought to be bleeding because guns are everywhere. And, and I'm going to say this before I forget it. I'm going to hurry up and say it. I saw a man get out of the car the other day and he had a blanket wrapped around it. And the Lord just shook the blanket and let me see that that was an assault weapon. I said, good God. For, and he took it and went on in the house. What do you need an assault weapon for? The other day I was riding down the street and some, some I ain't going to tell you what, the young men, they weren't men, outside with 22 just shooting up in the air. Won't God take care of us? And, and we, put your hands together. You know God took care of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody is on edge. But he's making something beautiful out of your life. The devil is a liar. Don't forget where your help come from. Hallelujah. We are going through. We are going through the worst of times. Because Jesus said, my sheep, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. God wants us to repent. God wants us to go down to the potter's house. Some good things happen down at the potter's house. And I don't know what's going on in your house, but if you go down to the potter's house, you'll get a word from the Lord. God did not leave Israel without hope. If you read over in the 31st chapter, he lets them know that he's going to bring them out, and he's going to bring them out all right. You might be going through. You might have unexplained problems. You might have disappointments, discouragement. But hang on in there, because serving the Lord is going to pay off after a while. Hallelujah, somebody. He sees about your head. He sees about your disappointment. He sees about your discouragement. Don't look at them. Look at him. Hallelujah. Because if it wasn't for the cross, my soul would be lost. I'm so glad that I have a hope that goes beyond the grave. And he can do what mother, father, sister, or brother cannot do. He can deliver you from the hand of you. God wants to make something beautiful. Red, yellow, black, or white. We're all precious in his sight. God is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And you got your little grocery list made out where she's going to be in heaven. You don't know where she's going to be. He going to be there. My cousin going to be there. To them that look for him shall he appear the second time. I want to make heaven my home. I'm going to let God do what he has to do in my life. Because there's a place prepared for me. There's a place prepared for you. And we, this, 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 this earth, and I, I have to serve notice on you. This earth is going to burn. What you have in your arsenal, you don't need it on the other side. Because the wicked is going to cease from troubling. The weary shall be at rest. And all of the saints of the ages are going to sit. It's going to be worth it. One day in the kingdom, my friend, it's going to be for every heartache, every disappointment that you ever had. I want to see him. But I got to serve notice on you. The Bible said if the righteous, I said if the righteous scarcely make it in, what's going to happen to those that don't obey the gospel? There's a place called heaven, and there's a place called hell. And you're not going to miss both of them. Mm-hmm. So make up your mind where you want to go. And ain't no air conditioners in hell. Read Luke, the 16th chapter. The Bible said, in hell, he lifted up his eyes and said, Father Abraham, let Lazarus come down here and cool my scorching tongue. you at the point of no return. So this is the first day for the rest of your life. You might as well have to make up your mind that I'm going to serve the Lord because. I'm going to serve the Lord because. Hallelujah. I'm going to serve the Lord because there's a reward for me. Don't be like Israel. Love God one day and curse him the next day. My friend, get on your knees and pray when you go to bed. Pray him before your head start hurting. Pray him when the medicine walks off, works off. Pray him when your children write. Pray him when your husband leave you. Just pray. 
and find a reason to praise God. Because Jesus is the best thing. It sounds like I'm fussing, but I'm not. I'm just trying to punch your funny bone. So maybe you can laugh. Like Brother Greg used to teach us that song, ha, 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 ha. Well, I haven't went. Saints, it's time for us to stop complaining and start praising God. Because thousands have died, as Bishop was saying the other Sunday, and you're the ones that made it. I want you to leave this place today knowing that he brought me out and he brought me out all right. I'm just about finished, but I want you to know there's a city called heaven somewhere. And, and Patrice said a while ago that he has begun a good work in you. Witnessing is a good work. Talking about the glory of God is a good work. God wants you to tell somebody about his goodness. God wants you to tell somebody of his love and grace because the scripture says eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men the good things somebody say good things the good things I was thinking the other day if I gave you a hundred dollar bill you wouldn't want no wrinkle one you want some, some new ones ain't it I'm gonna tell this I want a new hundred dollar bill I want to crinkle up like <laughs> I see you reaching for your purse. <laughs> Bless him, Jesus. <laughs> Maybe I need tannins up here. <laughs> God is doing good things for us. And I don't care what you're going through. That's victory on the other side. Hallelujah. Go through your sickness and, and, and go through your disappointment. Go through because the Bible said when we walk through the valleys and the shadows of death. I won't fear no evil. If you go into heaven, you're going to have to die. So don't be afraid to give God his praise because it may be my last time. I don't know. God wants to do something good in your life. Hallelujah. He wants to give you loving kindness, tender mercy, grace, patience. And he wants to let you know that you can bear every burden. Don't be discouraged, my friend, because trouble don't last always. And I stop by here to tell you some glad morning. When this life is over, we're going to fly away, Brother David. Hallelujah, we're going to be at last, we're going to be home. There's a city called heaven somewhere. Y'all ever read that in Revelation? He's going to wipe all tears. Don't look at me like that. You act like you don't want to go there. When I wake up and see Jesus, hallelujah, somebody, we're going to be with him forever and ever and ever. I don't know how long that is, but I want to be with him one day after forever because we'll leave in him. We'll never come back again. Oh, bless his name forever. The streets are going to be paved with gold. Hallelujah. Sickness will take a vacation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more bills. No more breaking ends. No more drugs. I want to make I know I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. Get on back in here and do what you got to do. Serving the Lord is going to be all right. How many are serving with gladness? Do what you got to do. Hallelujah. God been good to anybody? Now listen, I'm finished. I thank God for your patience. But the Lord spoke to me. And, and, and I want you to stand up. Don't get in no hurry. Because I want you to think about this. And I want you to stand up and praise God for something. I was just thinking, see that young man right there? That's number one son, Charles. I was going to get him one night from, from a basketball game. And I went up here on Leonard Avenue at 10 o'clock at night. I couldn't see. But a bullet hit my car and ended up in my neck. Kusha Mahaya. Woo! And you tell me to shut up? Mm -mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm still here. <laughs> Fell asleep at the wheel. And Channel 10 said, man, going home from work, didn't quite make it. Brother Elvis, come and help me. 
God is so good to us. Now listen, you can do this. We don't cut our testimony service, but we're going to have some this morning. Because some of you had back problems. You had knee problems. Problems with your children. With your grandchildren. Now just for one minute, I want you to stand up and praise God for something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah with your best praise. If you have to scream, you have to holler. Hallelujah. If you have to shout, you have to run. Give God the glory because he's making something beautiful. Hallelujah. He watched over you at night, kept you on your job. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise him for something. I don't care what you do. Jump up, shout, run, cry. But I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just 30 more seconds. Didn't he do it? Hallelujah. Won't he do it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I thought I was dying, but the Lord saved me. Hallelujah, somebody. You were sick and he brought you out. Didn't have a buffalo nickel and he made a way. Do something. Let him know that you appreciate it. Stump your feet. Holler. Hallelujah. 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 If it hadn't been for the Lord that was on your side. God, I praise you. I praise you, God. I praise you. These are your people. You said you would never leave us. You will never forsake us. And I want to thank you for being God. Hmm. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Everybody that love God, give him your best clap offering. Hallelujah. Don't leave here without praising God. He's going to make something beautiful. Before you take your seats, I need three people to come up here and stand and let me pray for you. The rest of y'all sit down. I just, I want to pray for three people. God told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's Akasha Mahaya. I just want three people. I need one more person. I know God is talking to you because he talked to Jeremiah. Hallelujah. If there's more, you can come. Oh boy, shut up, I don't know about you, but I'm going to the potter's house. <laughs> Things happen at the potter's house. Oh, bless his God. That little boy, He takes you. Oh, God. Hmm. Thank you, sir. While Elvis is playing. I want the church to bow your head with us. Somebody is crying. Somebody's heart is broken. But God is not through with you yet. It's all right to cry. My heart has been broken. My heart has been broken. Tell him what you want. He's working behind the scenes. Oh God, he sees you. Don't be scared to tell him Jeremiah had an excuse. I'm a child. Oh God, these are your people. Mm -hmm. Tell him what you want. He said, ask. The devil is rebuked already. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I charge you to leave this place. <laughs> Tell God your secrets. <laughs> I feel him, saints. I feel him. He's not a man that he have to lie. Not the son of man that he have to repent. He repented what he was going to do to Judah and Jerusalem. He repented. Homoshata. If it ain't right, ask God to make it right. <laughs> I wish I had a praying church. Hmm. Oh God. 
Mm-hmm. Just wait on him. Wait on him. Wait on the Lord. God is talking to you. God is talking to you. Come. Are you listening? Mm. <laughs> Somebody tell him thank you. Hallelujah. God is in this place. Mm. Don't be afraid to praise him because your victory is in your praise. Hallelujah. 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 There it is. There is your victory. Hey, Shabbatah. Woo! Praise him, church. Hallelujah. There is your victory. There is the victory. God, I give you praise. Hey, tell about Shana Rehoboth. Rehoboth, praise him. Hallelujah. This is the little vocal shata. If you believe God heard your prayer, just shoot your hands up and give him a praise. I don't care what you asked him for. Hallelujah. And go back to your seats. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Won't he do it? Tell him thank you. I'm healed. I'm delivered. And I'm set free. Oh, God, I praise you. Let him do something new in your life today. And he's never failed me. And he never will. Return to your seats with a praise in your lips. Give God a praise. God is doing something beautiful in our lives. God has done something beautiful in our lives. Hallelujah. When he died and rose again for our justification, he has done something beautiful for our lives. Let's give the Lord a praise again for the message and the messenger. Hallelujah. It's offering time. We're going to ask our ushers will they pass out the offering envelopes if you need them. Praise the Lord. And also someone left some keys. They were left in the back and if you're missing keys and if they're yours they're here. And and you can see the ushers in the back, or you can come and get them on your way out. I think the envelopes have already been passed out. And what we're gonna do is follow our usual pattern. We're gonna have one aisle to stand on my on my right, and then we're gonna have on my left and then the middle section last. And we're gonna drop our offerings and we're gonna uh, leave the building. Please stand with me with your offerings in your hand. Let us look to the Lord and this will be our closing prayer.